Okay, let's get started. We'll just jump right into things. This is about delivery vehicles and lorries and buses. And it's about what comes out of the back of them. Particulate matter and nitrogen oxide. It's also about the European project called Parfum and how it's helping us to do something about those emissions in Bremen. Even though less than one in 10 vehicles in the Bremen city center is a delivery vehicle, a lorry or a bus, most of them are diesel vehicles and those are the ones that cause half of all nitrogen oxide emissions. Before we go any farther, we need to set the record straight. We don't want to overstate anything, but we do want to be sure you know that our city is actually a lovely, lovable, and livable place. We don't want to leave any false impressions because of all the traffic you'll see. But back to the story. Of course, Bremen, like every other city, has to face the challenge of reducing its air pollution. But we've already made a lot of changes to make our environment nicer. For example, trams and buses automatically get to go first in traffic, all the time. Bremen is a nice place for bikes, too. In fact, our bike network is over 600 kilometers long. You can get almost anywhere by bike. Everybody does it, from students to politicians. It's normal for Brameners to ride their bikes, even in one-way streets. But that's not rowdyism. Cyclists in Bremen are allowed to do that. Along with these measures for bike riders and public transport, Bremen has a low emission zone. For a little while longer, Euro 2 and Euro 3 cars can still go in, but as of 2011, only vehicles with Euro 4 or better emission standards are allowed to go in. And how do we know about our air quality? Because we monitor it, all the time. At the nine measuring stations we have all around the city. Now come on, let's get on the bus. Help? Don't worry, it's just a camera. Take a closer look at the bus we're traveling on. It says EEV on it. EEV, that's the highest environmental standard for diesel vehicles in all of Europe. Our bus journey is giving us the chance to show you how impressive the reductions are in nitrogen oxide and particulate matter through green technology. Since we're in a movie, we can illustrate this for you visually. There. Just the way the frame just got smaller, EEV buses make emissions smaller. In comparison to older vehicles, only 1 25th of the emissions come out. As you can easily see, we've left the bus. And we're at a filling station. Not very exciting? Wait, let's go a little closer. We can do that because we have a zoom. Look, it's natural gas. The filling station is one of several in Bremen where low emission natural gas vehicles can fill up their tanks thanks to our Parfum project, and the funding that goes along with it, of course. And now we're going to do something that's only possible in the movies. A cut to a completely different location. Hold on tight. And now we're at the Bremen Utility Company. And since we're here, we're going to make one more cut. This time into the office of Dr. Torsten Kuhne. He's on the board of the utility company. Erdgas im Verkehr, für uns ein langen Thema. Um Natural gas. It's been a problem for us for a long time. It's relatively hard to set up because it depends on infrastructure. People rightly complain that there aren't enough filling stations, so setting up infrastructure is a fundamental concern for us. From a financial perspective, it's quite difficult and doesn't pay off in the beginning, so we were grateful that there was financial support for the construction of natural gas infrastructure. We've set up a filling station with the happy result that, since we've expanded the network of stations, even though it's just three, sales volumes of natural gas have tripled inside of a year. That means more people are driving environmentally friendly natural gas cars. And of course, that's cost-effective for people too. And I think it's always been an obstacle that a lot of people have said, well, natural gas cars, they're kind of lame. But now that's changed. We even have the first turbos. In that respect, I'd say the financial support has really paid off. We've established a solid base. I was happy to set up the filling station back then, and it looks like customers have rewarded it. We'll see whether it keeps going when petrol prices are low. But I think it will. And now, cut. Back to the petrol station, please. In a coincidence that can only happen in the movies, like the one we're in here, a DHL vehicle is pulling up to the natural gas pump right now. If we look very closely at this vehicle, we'll notice that it's clean and green. 
we know that because it says so in big letters on the side. Apart from that, we can learn from the vehicle label that this car, thanks to our perfume project, is extra super clean. DHL delivery vehicles get a clean bill of health in Bremen City Centre, thanks to the partnership between DHL and Bremen's Environment Authority. Having cut to Dr. Kerner's office, we're now cutting away again. Hold on tight. Okay, do you know where we are? We're in Bonn, in front of the DHL tower. And thanks to another one of our coincidences, Peter Sonnabend is here too. DHL stellt täglich in Deutschland ungefähr drei Millionen Paketsendungen zu. DHL delivers approximately 3 million packages a day in Germany, so we've been grappling with the issue of the environmental effects of our delivery fleet for years. One possibility was to switch to natural gas vehicles. This would reduce the particulate matter that's harmful both to people and to the environment. So we're very pleased to have been able to work with the city of Bremen and the EU Parfum project to increase our fleet of natural gas vehicles. Now we serve the entire city centre with them. Now back to Bremen, double time. Bremen city centre, that's where we are again. And there's our clean DHL car again. And we're going to steer that car to the next stop in our Parfum project journey. Before you is something extra special. It's the only one in all of Europe. It's called an eco-loading zone. Environmentally friendly delivery vehicles and lorries have an extra special advantage here. They're allowed to unload at the eco-loading zone. Right about now, you probably want to ask the very same question as we do. What exactly is an eco-loading zone? Before we explain how it works, we'd like to tell you why it works. It works because of the Parfum project. It's that simple. The eco-loading zone is reserved for environmentally friendly vehicles with emission standard Euro 5. Each one gets a user permit and a little transponder hidden behind its windscreen. Next to the sign that we've just looked at in such detail, there's a light. And above the light is a little black box. The box recognizes vehicles that are allowed to stop here. The lamp also serves another purpose, by the way. It tells the vehicles that aren't allowed to stop here that they have to leave. And you'll be interested to know that light thing works amazingly well. But back to those who are allowed to stop here. All of them, including our DHL friend, have a big advantage. The eco-loading zone is located right on the edge of the pedestrian zone. From the eco-loading zone, they can deliver as easy as pie, even outside the usual vehicle access hours for the pedestrian zone. So, while others search for parking places or pay parking fines, our DHL man is doing his job. So, what shall we do now? Let's cut over to the Chamber of Commerce. And since we can do it, let's treat ourselves to a look at the beautiful shooting building that houses the Chamber. And here's Dr. Andreas Otto from the Chamber of Commerce. He'd like to share his opinion about the eco-loading zone with us. Für die Handelskammer ist die Erreichbarkeit der Innenstadt nicht nur für Kunden und Besucher, sondern auch für Lieferanten und für Dienstleister von großen For the Chamber of Commerce, the accessibility of the city center, not only for customers and visitors, but also for delivery vehicles and service providers, is of great interest. In that regard, we welcome the introduction of the eco-loading zone in Bremen, as it offers the possibility for deliveries and service providers with vehicles that are particularly environmentally friendly to provide services all day long. We don't believe in prohibitions. We believe, in general, that incentives should be offered. The same goes for the fleet-wide agreements with regard to the low-emission zone. Fleet-wide agreements. Right. We've done that in the Parfum project, too. Now we'll explain in a fun way what a fleet-wide agreement is. Let's take a company that's located in the low-emission zone. In vehicle fleets, there are some older vehicles that really shouldn't be allowed into the low-emission zone anymore. With a fleet-wide agreement, the business is obliged to use low-emission vehicles from now on, preferably Euro 5. Then, the Environment Authority doesn't look at every single car individually, it looks at the average of the whole fleet. If the company has a lot of Euro 5 vehicles, its older vehicles can enter the low-emission zone for a little while longer. As you can easily see, this will encourage conversion of entire fleets to Euro 5 vehicles. By the way, there's an emissions calculator on the Bremen Environment Authority's website for fleet operators. 
companies located in the low emission zone can enter their vehicles, passenger vehicles, light and heavy commercial vehicles, by size and emission standard. The system gives your fleet a point value and tells you if it's environmentally friendly enough for next year and for the year after that too. One business that's located right smack in the middle of the low emission zone is InBev. You know Beck's beer, don't you? The brewery doesn't have any of its own lorries. It works with a forwarding agency. But apart from those vehicles, customer cars that pick up goods and vehicles that deliver raw materials are also calculated into the fleet-wide agreement. Basically, anything on wheels that enters or leaves the brewery. Es ist eine große Herausforderung für uns auf der einen Seite for us, it's a big challenge to both meet the requirements of the low emission zone and maintain the three shifts at our brewery. In order to keep things rolling, we have between 70 and 75,000 lorry contacts a year. Lorries are coming and going in approximately one minute intervals. The solution was the fleet-wide agreement that we entered into as a pilot project with the Environment Administration. We've registered the emission levels of approximately 5,800 lorries of our customers, suppliers and delivery partners. We knew in the summer of 2008 that we would meet the requirements of 2010. Within six months, the number of especially environmentally friendly vehicles, the Euro 5 ones, more than doubled. Every second delivery lorry that rolls in or out of here is a Euro 5 vehicle. It shows how effective the fleet-wide agreement is. And that's about it. Let's just sum up. At the very beginning, we gave an overview of the problem. We showed you quickly what Bremen does for public transport and for bikes. We had the Bremen low emission zone. We took a ride on an EEV bus and saw how remarkably the emissions were reduced. Down to 125th. We addressed the support of the natural gas filling station. We went to the Bremen utility company and to DHL in Bonn. We mentioned the encouragement of natural gas vehicles, like DHLs. We introduced the first ever in Europe, eco-loading zone. And along the way, we took a moment to admire the Chamber of Commerce building, and we eavesdropped on the Chamber's statement. Apart from that, we explained what fleet-wide agreements are, how they work, and what they do for the environment. You remember, we were at the InBev Brewery together. We might also mention that, thanks to Parfum, we have lots more natural gas cars. Or that Bremen has fleet agreements with other firms too. Or, or, but we don't want to show off. The only thing missing is a few closing words. With a nice backdrop, ideally from a senator. But if he did happen to appear on his official bicycle, that would be another one of those coincidences that only happen in movies like this one. Hallo. Für mich als Bremer Senator für Umwelt, Bau und Verkehr und Europa ist dieses Projekt eine riesige Erfolgsgeschichte. For me, as responsible senator, this project is a real success story. As Europeans, we're pleased to work with our Italian and Dutch partner cities and to learn from one another. As senator for transport, I'm pleased that urban transport overall has become cleaner and quieter. And as senator for the environment, it's very important to me that pollution levels are declining. Since commercial vehicles account for some of these emissions, we need to focus on them as well. We've learned a great deal in this project, so all around, positive.